My guest today got her start on Broadway in Brooklyn and in the Heights before wowing critics and audiences and winning a Tony Award playing Anita in West Side Story. Now she's off to the Midwest, a place she's fallen in love with recently, to star as Angelica in the Chicago premiere of Hamilton. What's up, Karen Olivo? Hi. I'm so happy you're here. I'm very happy to be here. It's so good to be able to see. You've been off on so many adventures recently, and I'm excited to catch up. I feel like you, you're, you're, you've just, you're, your life has gone in, in all sorts of, right? I yeah. Mean, it's been a little crazy. Yeah, so let's start with the, the newest adventure. You are right now deep in rehearsals. Deep. For Hamilton, yeah. How deep, how deep is it? Uh, probably not deep enough <laughs> for the kind of show that it is, yeah. but uh, eventually I'll get there. How is it going? I mean... It's going really well. Uh, Tommy's assembled a pretty... Tommy uh, Kale, who we Tommy Kale, yes. He's got some really great people in the room. It's, yeah. it's kind of unbelievable. They all fit their characters so well. They're bringing brand new stuff to it. Yeah. It's so much fun to play. I'm and there with Josh Henry. And this is and you did in the Heights with him. Yes. And it's so nice to see all these in the Heights uh, people. Sort of. In Mandy Gonzalez is now playing the role on she Broadway. She opened last night. She and opened, I saw yeah, her. She opened, yeah. And it's so great because I love in the Heights. So it's great to see all of you. And you know, I have to tell you, when I saw uh, Hamilton at the Public, I immediately thought of you for this role. Oh. I mean, I did. I thought, well, well, Karen Olivo could play that. Did you know of the role? Did Lynn write it with you in mind? Or I did don't it think he wrote it with me in mind. I know that I have a connection to the Satisfied song because he wrote, there's a bit of music that belongs to that song now that he wrote for an album of mine. Okay. And it was a song that I never recorded and he took it back. Ah, interesting. Um, okay. So I have that connection uh -huh. to it. Maybe the older, s he, you know, Angelica, sort of the older sister to Hamilton in a uh -huh. way. But you obviously uh, have been watching this amazing thing happen to Lynn and to the show, and I know he's a dear friend of yours. What's it been like watching the entire world fall in love with Lynn? Uh, I don't know. Inevitable? Yeah. Because you know, the first time you met him, you're like, is this kid for real? Right, right. And then every single time you met him, he was exactly the same person. You're like, no, oh, I guess that's him. Uh -huh. um, and people just love him. His energy is undeniable. and. Yeah, I, it's inevitable. Anyone who meets him sort of. Inevitable. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just going to keep getting bigger and bigger. And yeah. And it's, ine it's, it's inevitable. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> but this is cool because now this is the first time that the show's sort of being built again. Right. And it's basically a whole new group of people. I mean, yeah. So wha what's it like watching Tommy in the room and sort of what? And you said new things are sort of being found. And yeah, well, you know, Tommy's really great about finding people who have their own perspective and their own voice. Mm. He's managed to find these people who are fans of the material, mm -hmm. but who want to do an homage. So that's kind of where we are. And it's really great to see Tommy and Blank and... <laughs> Blank. I didn't know that was his nickname, actually. It's easier than saying Andy. I like Andy. that. Blank. I like that. <laughs> no, I'm into that. I'm totally, gonna, I'm totally stealing that. I like that. And Alex Lackamore. <laughs> I was going to say Lack, but I was Alex like, Lack. Alex Lackamore. <laughs> all of them, you know, Stephanie Clemens is in the room, uh -huh. Michael Balderrama, who we all did yeah. in the Heights together. It's just like home. It's mm -hmm. very, it's kind of funny. It's also sometimes gets disconcerting because they like to pick, pick at me. Because we're, oh, you know, because really? we're tight like that. Yeah, it's, it's a little too casual sometimes. No, I mean, they're great, but <laughs> I, I'm the butt of many a joke in that room. Yeah, like what? Like what? What's the what, what's easy to make fun of about Karen Olivo? I get frustrated pretty. I'm. Okay. I will. If if I don't understand what's going on, you will see it on my face. And okay. usually it's like. <laughs> so there's a lot right. of like Karen doesn't know what's going on. Everyone. <laughs> so I was in Chicago recently. There's already posters everywhere. It's very very. Everyone's very excited. It's already like a sellout. I mean, it's it's it's, it's cool. gonna basically be the same phenomenon there, and it's such a theater town too. Yeah. I mean, it's so exciting to do it there. And for you. You've, you've sort of put your roots in Madison, Wisconsin, right? Yeah. I love Madison. Uh, hello, Uncle Mark and Aunt Freddie. What? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I, I, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm down in the Midwest. <laughs> I love it. So, so for that, so that must have been a huge part of the appeal for you. Well, I mean, that was the whole reason. It's like, what, two and a half hours away. Yep. That's it. So you can do the show. Yep. And then you can go home and, and do your home life, too. Yeah. So it's sort of perfect. Yeah. And being the hottest show in the world. Yeah. <laughs> and then also get to spend this time hanging out with my friends. Yeah. Which is, you know, it doesn't get better. 
let's talk about <laughs> starting over because those words starting over with you are very now sort of infamous, right? Or famous yeah. or famous. Well, I don't know. It, 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 it caused a lot of stir. Yeah. I don't even know why it doesn't. So like, let's, let me let's just remind people. It's so like three and a half years ago mm -hmm. you were doing, you did a show Murder Ballad. Yes. Off Broadway. Yes. And it was actually moving to another yes. theater and you chose not to move with the show. Yes. And you put a blog post. You had a, you had a blog or you had a, do you still write a blog? No. You were like, that's it. My final blog post. Well, and there were only like eight people reading it anyway. No, that's clearly not true. Well, but there, maybe there was somebody <laughs> who I didn't know was reading it. You wrote um, a blog post basically saying that you were done with acting. That that experience was very hard. I was hard. done with being an artist in the way that I had been an artist before. Okay. There was something about you were done with the actor or you were yes. leaving the actor behind. Yes. And, and you I talked about sort yes. of how when you were young it was all this ambition and maybe never quite feeling like you were achieving what you wanted, right? Like just sort of a constant. Basically just trying to be an actor and nothing else in my life. Right. Forsaking everything else, yeah. forsaking relationships, yeah. learning about other things just so that I could succeed at acting. Yeah. And so I was like, you know what? This is not servicing me. So I'm not doing that anymore. That actor mentality is right. now by the wayside. Right. I'm gonna live my life. Right. I'll always be an artist. Yeah. I'll always be creating something. Yeah. But I'm not gonna follow this formulaic way of being an actor anymore. Mm -hmm. And did you know at that point that you were gonna move to the Midwest? I had an idea. Okay. I knew I didn't wanna be in LA anymore. I knew I wasn't gonna come back to New York. I'd just fallen in love with my husband. Uh -huh. And so I was like, this is, I had been traveling there to see him a lot. And I was like, you know, the Midwest, you, sh you show up and you're like, oh, everyone's my friend. <laughs> <laughs> it's gorgeous. No it's cheese curds. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, this is, you know, it's a, a really generous community. Yeah. They had a great art community there too. So, you know, that was all sort of my wheels were already turning. And I was like, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's where I'm going to be right. going. Reading that blog post for me was like, when Vanessa sings in 96,000, if I win the lottery, you'll never <laughs> see me again. That's how it felt. It was no! like, what, what? Stay broke then. <laughs> <laughs> I know a lot of people really had a hard time with it, uh, which I didn't even think that it would be an issue. I think I kind of felt like my friends would be like, oh, okay, Karen, you're, you're like hitting the reset button. Uh -huh. But uh, a lot of people sort of took it personally, which I thought was very interesting yeah. because, I mean, every single one of us has a, a turning point in their life. Right. And, and if you choose to follow the direction that your heart is calling, it's kind of strange if, you know, if someone would be like, I don't think that's right for you. Mm. It's like, you know what? You're mm. not even in here. Right. You have no idea. And right. maybe you're mad because now you don't get to see me as much. Right. But know that when I do come back, you're going to be happier. Mm. You know, mm. it wasn't servicing the art. And you've been doing all kinds of things there while you've been there. Yeah. So, so talk about, about some of these things you've been doing. Lots of teaching. Uh huh. Uh, I directed my first production. What was that? Fugitive Songs. Nice. Uh, how, and how was it? Melanie no Tyson. That's my, that's my duo right there. Um, <laughs> it was unbelievable. Yeah. You know, I know Chris really well and Nathan, and they were very generous with their script. You know, it's a song cycle, so it's yeah. many things can go wrong. Uh -huh. You know, they had a lot of trust in what I wanted to do, and um, and I had people who were game. I found the talent, and uh, it was a wonderful experience for me. Uh, and it gave me a lot of perspective too. I've been on the other side for so long. Yeah. Having to be on the other side of the table, you know, you have all of the responsibility and none of the control over the end product. Mm. You know, it right. all falls on your shoulders. Right. So if you can't communicate your ideas properly to that actor, to that musician, to yeah. that lighting designer, it all falls right here. And you can't execute it. So I learned a lot about communication and that was, that's been instrumental huh. in everything that I've done since. And you've also like worked backstage on shows and yeah. you've been doing like, like yeah. a techie? What are you doing? Well, <laughs> I've always loved like the other side. Yeah. Um, and my husband used to be an AQ yeah, he was like a sound on Broadway. Guy, right? Yeah, and you that's guys, how we you met. You met when you were doing Brooklyn. Yeah. Right. And he was, when I first moved to Madison, he was doing sound for Les Mis. And he was like, I'm not going to get to see you unless you work the show. And I was like, oh, I will totally do that. I would put mics on people. I'm like. The mic girl. I was. It was real fun. No you know how to put the mic on. We were just putting your mic on here. You were like, I got it. I, I'm a mic <laughs> No, girl. no. I, you know, I just don't want to <laughs> step on anyone's toes, but I got it. No. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So you really like dug in and you've just had this whole, maybe remembering why you love theater and why you love this whole sort of process. It's important to remove yourself from the grind, I think. Yeah. If you're going to remain in yeah. love with the medium. Uh -huh. So let's talk about West Side Story because you've been okay. doing it again. 
Yeah. <laughs> Anita's back. I don't even know why. Why did that happen? <laughs> so you won the Tony seven years ago. Yeah. Wow. Amazing seven night. years ago. I was rooting for you. It was very exciting. And where where's your Tony? Do you look at it or is where it in is Madison? It? It's at home. Yeah. Yeah. Is it like in uh, on a mantle or is it like It's a, like in the like the bar area. The bar area. Where well, we keep all of our trophies, like my kids' like softball okay. trophies and stuff like well, that. Well, booze and Tony's kind of go together. Broadway <laughs> and booze kind of go together, right? I mean, it kind of works. There's not as much booze. Lots of like softball trophies, though. Okay. <laughs> so talk about, you've been in Salzburg. Yeah. Did you ever know you would be there in your life? No. I, um, that's I, not even on like a bucket list. <laughs> right. Like, what is, it, what is it like? You know, it's a very rich country, so it was very interesting to go there. They love music in a way that... I mean, they're rabid fans. Hmm. Very conservative, but rabid fans. Right. It's, you know, it's the biggest thing that's ever happened. And I only went there because I got to work with Cecilia Bartoli and Gustavo Dudamel. Those, that was bucket list. So when somebody, when somebody said to you and said, do you want to do Anita again, were you like, yeah, I got it, I'm in. No. I mean, that, I was that like, seems like such a uh, no. hard role to just Right, I was like, I'm back. sorry, explain to me a little bit more why you want me to do it and what we're doing. <laughs> right. And then they were like, oh, it's a new, it's a reimagined version with Cecilia Bartoli and Gustavo Dudamel, and then I was like, yes. Okay. And was it hard to <laughs> it do it again? super hard. <laughs> because I remember it was hard the first time. Yeah, I'm real old. I mean, seven years have passed. <laughs> I mean, no. that's why I was amazed that you were just doing it again. But I wanted to work with them. Okay. So I just figured it out. And then you did it at the Hollywood Ball. Yeah, yeah, because I met Maestro Dudamel through that, and then he was doing something at the Hollywood Bowl, and he said, you should come and do it here. Cool. And that was a more concert version, so that okay. was very... And your kids got to see you do Anita, right? Did they get to go they and... They came to Salzburg. That's awesome. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, what, what, so what was your downtime like there? Like, what is it like living there? You know, they have opera schedule, so opera schedule is very different from... Like, what is it? Like, you do a performance, you take a day off. Okay. Oh, that's nice. It's, you think. Or you like throws you off. I didn't like it. Okay, there was too much. Okay. I need like need six or seven, like, so I can be like, oh, this is what it is. Got it. And then I can start playing. Right. But it was like every night was opening night. That was a little frustrating for me. But, you know, Austria is a gorgeous country, so I, I did a lot of sightseeing. Sightseeing. Yeah. It, the stage looked enormous. The video I saw, it looked like it's you were... Like this, it's like a New York City block. Yeah. Like, it's the length of... It's nuts. Yeah, it was crazy. Did you get Anita out of your system? You know, I you, feel well, like... Well, actually, one thing I saw that you wrote mm -hmm. somewhere, you said, I'm learning new things. So you said something about, I'm amazed how much I missed the first time playing her. Yes. Which I found fascinating. Absolutely. Well, the other thing is, like, you th when I went into the first version of West Side Story, yeah. you know, I had a very different mindset. And I think I was still trying so hard to please people. Mm -hmm. And I was, you know, I was thinking so much about my, my career and what is this going to do? And... I was really nervous about the dancing. And you know, when you get to a certain age and you're like, oh no, I know I can, I can do what I can do. Right. I'm not gonna stress about the stuff I can't do. Right. It's just not, it's not a possibility. Right. So once I allowed myself that freedom, then I started looking at other things. You know, there's lots of tools in the, tools, <laughs> the toolbox. So I was like, okay, well, since I can't do that, then I must look into this. Uh -huh. And so it was a whole different kind of Anita. What does that mean? For me. Explain what that means to someone who doesn't understand what you're talking about. Um, I think like, I feel like my first in, my first go on Broadway when I played Anita was much more of, I don't want to say sassy because that's not what I mean, but it was like a much younger version okay. of what Anita would be. Uh -huh. okay. Almost arrogant in her mm -hmm. ignorance of what this new America would be yep. like. And having gone through a little bit of stuff, I realized that this version was much more about keeping my family unit together. Mm like bringing the people that I love mm -hmm. from, you know, from really far away to a place in which we had to maintain something. Right. And so it became a story about love in a different way than mm. my Broadway version had. Okay, interesting. Well, damn, I wish I flew there to see it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you find being a mom sort of natural? No. No? No, it's something that I work at every single day. So Jim already had two kids. And, and so you sort you of... You say Jim like you know him. I love it. You're well, like, hey, Jim. Jim. His name's Jim, right? He's James, so, Jim, Jim. Jim, you're totally right. Jim. But it's like... Jim had two kids and uh, <laughs> we're on a first name basis. Hey, Jim. And um, and you sort of showed up and you were sort of a mom to them, right? I mean, a yeah. little stepmom. And wh wh what's that been like? I'm not like... I wouldn't say that I'm like a stepmom. I'm much more of like a parental figure okay. that um, they can come to and who takes care of them. I mean, maybe at times I'm the disciplinary 
but uh -huh. I, I, I kind of feel a little bit more like I'm letting them do their thing and if something goes awry, I'm like, eh, don't do that. Right. It's not like, absolutely not. It's a right. little bit more like, I wouldn't do that if I were you. Right. Okay, so how did Jim, hey Jim, how did he, uh, you, you were friends for many years. Yeah, for so like 11 years. That's that's a really long time. Yeah. We used to ride the subway together every yeah. day after performances of Brooklyn. Yeah. And so how did it suddenly become more? You know, he was really great about keeping in touch because he's just a fabulous human being like that. And Facebook? His, Facebook? Yeah, and his, but his friends are like, he, he, he never stops caring about his friends. Okay. So uh, he kept reaching out to me on Facebook and I was in LA, his sister lives in LA. Right. And my relationship had just ended and his had ended and we could sort of see hints of that on, you know, like Facebook yeah. updates and stuff like that. Yeah. That's embarrassing. But uh, he was like, I'm coming out, we should hang out. It sounds like you need like some, just like to relax right. and like see friends. And then we had brunch and I just looked at him and I was like, oh my God, like you're really hot. Like I, <laughs> like you're my friend and we have this relationship, but you're seriously hot. <laughs> and Did you actually verbalize that or were you thinking it? Ah, uh, no. I'm sure he could like tell because I was like, <laughs> He would say that he couldn't tell, but... Is that how you look at hot guys? It's <laughs> just sort of confused. I was like, why am I feeling these feelings? You're my friend. Okay. This is weird. <laughs> um, but I immediately called Ramona Keller, who I did Brooklyn yeah. with, and I was like, Ramona, Jim the Sound Man, because that's what we used to call him, Jim the Sound Man, <laughs> is fine. And she was like, girl, he's always been fine. What's wrong with you? And I was like, but I'm just realizing this. <laughs> Jim the Sound Man. <laughs> and he's just a stellar human being. I mean, y if you're friends with someone for that long. And you seem just like glowingly happy. I mean, it's awesome. It's so great to see yeah. you like this. I mean, it's, you know, it's definitely work. Yeah. The relationship is work, but uh, I know I'm with the best possible person for me. Mm -hmm. He makes me better. Mm -hmm. I hope that I make him better. I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do. I, I mean, he travels a lot now, but <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. And what's going on with your album? My album. You're making an album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have like half of it, half okay. of it in the can. Okay. And then uh, because Chicago well, yeah. is happening. Hottest show in the world. I'm, I had to like, I can't get in the studio and then possibly sing Angelica. So right. what we're going to do is we're going to wait for me to, to open up Hamilton. And right. then I'm going to start, I'm going to finish the rest of it in Chicago. Okay. And then we should be able to And it's to Broadway release. themed or is it not? It's all Broadway material with the exception of probably one tune. Okay. That's an original. Um, but you know, I don't know. It's the same, it's Borderlight. So Eden Espinosa's album and Leslie Odom Jr.'s album. Okay. It's material from the genre, but when you hear it, you're like, that. I don't recognize that as cool. being a musical theater song. Well, I can't wait to hear it. I can't wait till I can listen to it. Yeah, we've so we've get working, on it. I know. Open that working. show and keep going. <laughs> <You're all laughs> keep going. I want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> so, in terms of like the future and Broadway, what can we expect? Or do, can we expect nothing? Or just sort of you take things as they come? And I just yeah. Where's your head at now with all of this? Do you feel like going into something like Hamilton? Do you feel like you're sort of back in the the rhythm of it a little bit more? Do you feel any of the, the, any of the pressure that you were feeling before? Or? I feel no pressure. That's great. I, I'm really just looking at working with people that I love, mm -hmm. doing art that makes me proud, yeah. making sure that it services my family and my community, and that's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. I don't really have anything to prove, so I just want to do good work with great people right. and like pay bills, and I'm cool. It'd be cool if Lynn wrote like a show for the two of you. That'd be cool. I mean, I mean, he's busy, but he's kind of busy. I mean, he does seem to have a, a certain. He's a draw for you, because you know, like when you first left, it was like she's back to do Tick Tick Boom with Lynn. Yeah, because now he's she's my doing friend. Hamilton with Be Lynn. If you, you know, know I mean, like if you're my friend, if you call me up and you're like Karen, will you? And I'm like, yeah. And it doesn't matter if I'm like doing something. Right. That I just I go, yeah, I'll do it. Right. So Lynn, please keep calling. <laughs> please keep calling her. No, I like when you're around, and so I just want you know keep coming up with if if, if it takes Lynn to get you to do things, then. Then, th then that's where we're going to do it. Okay. <laughs> well, have an amazing time in Chicago. I will. Thank Are you. Are you like super excited to like spend time in the city? Have you spent a lot of time in Chicago? Yeah, I did. Uh, I think Rent there. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I did the, a little stint on the First National. You're at the Private Bank Theater. I love that name, the Private Bank Theater. Private. Bank. It's so official. It's so sponsored. <laughs> uh, starting September 27th, and I don't know if you guys can get tickets, but try. 
I'm gonna I'm sure I'm sure gonna try and you should fly there even if you don't live there because I think it's gonna be spectacular, spectacular cast. I'm wowed every day in rehearsal. Well, if you're wowed, then I'm wowed. I'm, I can't wait. It's gonna be good. Thank you so much for coming in. Thanks. It's so good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.